just realized I did not actually adjust the camera right as I was getting all that set up. Let's see if I can get this thing balanced on here and everything set up for the green screen. Uh, which way am I going? This way. This way is up. Go to the screen. There we go. I'm back in focus and stuff is happening. Yeah, um, King, it's ridiculous out there. Uh, <laughs> I have been spending most of my time at the pool about two blocks away from my house, trying to deal with the heat myself. The color filter might be messed up. Um, am I as red as I was in the past? Maybe not. No, I think I'm good. Uh, there was a problem for a second there where everything was screwed up, but I think we're good. Um, in theory, people I can hear people on Discord on my ear. Um, haven't tested it. Testing one, two, three. Can people hear me on Discord? Do, do, do. All right, well, if anybody pops up there, then great. If not, not too worried about it. Um, let me drag this off to the side here so I've got just the chat. Um, otherwise, I guess this time what I want to talk about is um, based on the straw poll from last time. What did we get as results? Um, oh man, algebraic structures snuck up to be equal with propagators, but I'd already basically decided to go with propagator stuff, so, sorry. Um, so, um, I guess really the question is, what is a propagator? And what are they good for? Um, and where do they come from? And what's this term? Nope, looks like Comanet's lost at the last second. Someone must have come through and stuffed a bunch of ballot entries in for CRDTs. It wasn't me, even. Um, besides, honestly, I really wasn't sure what the heck I would do with co-free Coman, uh, co Comanet co since it was a topic suggested by somebody else that I didn't really have anything particularly deep to say about. Let me see if I can um, adjust the uh, background here so I get a little less static. This might take me a second, but I'd rather do this now than have it go for the whole stream. Do, 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 do. Where the heck is my properties? Um, no, that's good. Filters, chroma key. There, at the risk of me being a little ghosty. That should make the background a little less shimmery. Um, so what was I going to do? Okay, so propagators. Um, so what is a propagator um, and where do they come from? Uh, let's see here. So there was a thesis by a guy named uh, Lexi Radul under Jerry Sussman. Uh, he called it The Art of the Propagator in 2009. Lexi's a... Uh, a good friend locally here in the Boston area. And um, is there something new in the propagators talk? Probably we're going to, we'll see if we go through implementing them, Bully. I'm not quite sure where we want to go with this today. Um, it was just that uh, the topic of them came up. We'll probably go through and maybe build some of the machinery for at least talking about what it means to be a propagator. Um, build some of that on top of the abelian package because we already have something for dealing with commutativity. At least that's my general thought. Um, so the thing I linked is Alexi Rudol's PhD thesis on the topic, or at least the technical report. I don't remember which one it is. Um, and here, the general model is to view a um, network of information, uh, 
Uh, let's see if I can find an example. Uh, I don't really like the starting one from his thesis, but let's see if I can find a later one. Multidirectional computation. All right. Um, the idea here is like, let's say I have, uh, maybe I can switch cameras here. I should have the other one set up. Here to the drawing screen. Aha. Now, did I leave myself a pen? I did. Frame that a little better. Um, and I sadly don't have the thing to keep this thing from going out of focus yet. Um, so what I want to have is I have cells that hold information about values. And these things that propagate information between those cells. So instead of these things holding like actual, like the value is five, the value is six, they, they hold like, I know that I know something about the value. And so whatever um, structure that we're going to choose to store that information with, will have some kind of uh, extra conditions that we'll be putting on it. In particular, the kinds of things that I'm interested in are generally going to be um, that the cells will hold on to information that is in some uh, join semi-lattice. So let's see if I can build up that topic from scratch in code. So I'll switch over to the coding window. Maybe coding and drawing, haha. -ha. there. Of course, I didn't resize the font to be readable at this scale. I will figure out this whole broadcasting thing eventually. All right. Um, So let's see here. So what I want is a notion of a join semi-lattice. Um, and I'm going to always assume that these are bounded join semi-lattices. So um, I'm just going to call them semi-lattices to save myself some typing. And I'll assume that I have a monoid for A. And so what are we adding? We're adding to the laws. So a monoid gives us what? That we have A map N B map N C is A map N B map N C, no matter how we put the parentheses. And that um, empty map N A is A is A map N empty. We had this last time. And what we're adding when we move into it being a semi-lattice is that a mapend b is b mapend a, and that a mapend a is a. So we talked a little bit about semi-lattices last time when we were talking about inverse semigroups. Um, so if we have all of that stuff from inverse semigroups around, we can say, hey, look, every semi-lattice is an inverse semigroup. And we can say that the in that setting, the inverse of A is A. And um, if you recall from last time when we were talking about inverse semigroups, if you don't, that's fine. Um, last time we said that an inverse semigroup had these properties that inverse A, I'm appended with inverse of A, I'm appended with A is A. Inverse of A, I'm appended with A, I'm appended with inverse of A is inverse of A. And this follows just from the laws we have above. Right, because if inverse of A is A, then this is just A appended with itself multiple times, but that's just A and that's just A. So that just all trivially follows. So we obey the, well, I only gave the laws for this to be a regular semigroup. And then for it to be an inverse semigroup, we needed to know that all idempotent elements commute, but every element is idempotent and therefore, and all elements commute. So, huh. so we're an inverse semigroup kind of trivially. 
That's all I have to say about inverse semigroups. Um, they're not going to be otherwise relevant for the rest of the talk. Um, aim append. Um, so the is mapend the join operator? Yes, I'm just using the usual um, one from data that semigroup. So all I've built is this notion of a semi lattice. Um, so those are the things that I'm going to be wanting to work with. And those will be the information that I'll be storing in the cells. So inside of here, there'll be some join semi lattice. It might look like something like here. I don't know anything about the value. It's a bottom. Let me move to just the drawing screen. Here I know say that the value is exactly true or false. Or up here, I've you've told me that it's both true and false. We've reached a contradiction state. So I'm going to always be drawing my... Um, I, I, I just kept pronouncing it mapend because it's the... Yes, it probably should be sapend. I don't remember what I called it. We didn't even give it a name in the semigroups library. Um, so whenever I draw my, my semi-lattices, I'm basically going to be skipping drawing the top of the the semi-lattice. Um, you can always assume it's up there. In general, whenever anything in my network reaches this contradiction state, I'm going to blow up the whole world um, in some way that I'll try and make a little more rigorous as we go. So why do I care about propagators? What happened was, um, so Alexi wrote his thesis on the topic and um, tried to get me to read it for probably two or three years. And I finally got around to reading it, and I realized I had a whole pile of problems that I was all working on individually that I wasn't smart enough to solve individually. Um, and then by putting them all in one framework, what I could do is I could start to borrow the features that made each one of those things tractable to make more of the rest of them tractable. So that's sort of where this started to go um, in an interesting direction, right? Usually you say, well, the more general problem is harder to solve than the more specific problems. Um, but what I found was by putting things into a general framework, what I could do is I could start borrowing the techniques that made each one of those uh, specific um, problems tractable uh, for the other problems. And so it actually turns out to be kind of, kind of an interesting little space. So what I'm going to be interested in is these, this will be a, a, this arrow here or this arrow here or this arrow here. Um, they might be hyper edges. They might actually have like two input edges. Um, yielding one output, um, will be propagators. And a propagator will be defined to be very simply a uh, monotone function between join semi lattices. So what is monotone here? There is an information ordering on our, uh, uh, you can put on any join semi lattice that you can say that A is less than or equal to B if, um, We'll say that uh, B equals AC uh, for some C. So that means basically if there's something that I could, it, it, like if, if, if the node I'm interested in is below, um, the, the, if A is below B, then I'll say that A is less than or equal to B. I believe this is the natural order on a join semi lattice. There's also a funny natural order you can put on inverse semi groups and stuff like that based on appending an idempotent element to another element in the uh, inverse semi.